Welcome to Dino's Garage. Um, today I'm going to be uh, showing you a new YZF750R. Um, when I say new, it's actually a 1995 motorcycle. I've just acquired this bike. Um, I'm going to be bringing it out for the first time into daylight. It was delivered the other day in night time, so I've basically put it away in the garage. Today's the first time I'm going to bring it out and uh, have a look around it and show you guys what it's like. Um, hopefully there's no real issues with it but as always there will be something that needs to be tackled, sorted out just to make it look hopefully as good as it possibly can be. This is a 1995 motorcycle so we're nearly what 24 years old so one year later we're going to be into a classic motorcycle. Like I say it's the YZF 750R 1995. Let's take a look at it now. So here it is, the 1995 YZF750R. Um, first impressions, the bike looks really good. Um, from a distance, which is kind of how I saw it on uh, eBay, um, the bike looked very good. But eBay can always be deceiving and any photos can be deceiving. It's always good to try and get a good look at these bikes. Um, ideally you'd go and visit the bike, have a good look at it and then decide whether or not you want to bid on it. But this bike was actually up in um, Ely, I think it's pronounced, just north of Cambridgeshire. So that's quite a while for me. It's about a sort of three, three and a half hour drive. So I wasn't going to go up there and have a look. I got the guy to take a video and walkabout video of it for me. Um, just so I could have a better look at it. Um, some of the things that uh, I've already spotted here, for instance, is this nasty tank guard. It's basically a bit of uh, carbon fibre or fake carbon fibre. So I'm hoping when I take this off, it's not hiding something nasty under there, that it was put there just to protect the tank, but could be something nasty under there. Um, this was something that I saw from the walkabout video. You can just make out here, there's um, like a crazing in the uh, screen and also looks like the mirror has been pulled and it's caused this cracking crazing there in the uh, screen so I am going to need to replace that screen which is a shame but there we go uh, one thing the guy didn't mention but which I've also seen is there's a crack here obviously it happened at the same time as this here um, it's actually a, a crack this bit's broken off completely so what I will have to do is get in behind here fix something on the back of it and uh, sort that out and then obviously fill and respray this so it's it's no longer broken and it no longer looks like it's got a crack in it um, so I can see it's been dropped here there is actually a crack here as well um, just sits below the, the paint line um, but again I have to repair that from behind um, let's have a look let's have a look together see what we see um, YZF 750R, six, six pot brake calipers, um, awesome brakes on these bikes. Um, this was before they started putting the um, blue spots as they call them on the YZF R1 and the R6s. Um, but these six pot calipers were superb. Upside down forks, 1995 bike, upside down forks, one of the sort of earlier bikes of upside downies. has an Olin stick on here which you think yeah right like it's got Olins but um, they did have Olin shocks on these bikes you can see here that's the uh, the Olin's adjuster and that's the Olin's shock in there what else am I seeing here that might need sorting um, needs a good clean that's for sure a lot of oil and muck all around this area obviously with the chain someone's overly oiled the chain and it all sprays up everywhere it gets over all the wheels there's always these sorts of things you see on a lot of bikes that you buy people overdo things and over lubricate things better that than not enough um, forks look okay might be a little weak there yeah it looks maybe like the fork seal's gone there quite a bit of oil coming out so that fork seal on that upside down you may be gone Bike's only done uh, 27,000 miles, which is not a great deal um, for previous owners. So yeah, little little bit of work to be done, um, but I'll clean it up today, get it looking nice and clean. Um, might even get to tackle 
that broken bit of the upper screen or the replacement screen didn't know about the front fork so I don't think um, so that'll be a bit of a bit of a tricky one but I'll sort that out and there we are that's the YZF 750R 1995 model looks a very sweet bike um, handles superbly um, when you read some of the older videos see some of the stuff on YouTube read up about these bikes um, they handle very well of course but they're a very good all-rounder they're actually pretty comfortable easy to ride and yeah a bit of a contender really for the CBR 900 uh, Fireblade welcome back to the uh, video of the YZF 750R uh, I've gone through and um, been cleaning it um, and as you clean uh, any bike give it a real good clean a real sort of detailed clean you'll begin to see small details of things you know that may be missing or broken or things that aren't broken things that actually are very good for its age etc so I haven't gone through um, for instance the front fork area um, the front forks are actually really good condition one thing I'm impressed with with this bike like I say it's a 1995 is actually Yamaha built a very good quality machine here I often think that Honda CBR, CBR 400s which I've had a few of are very good quality bikes but um, this Yamaha is as equally good quality I mean as you can see here the, the original paint is all in very good condition and uh, the wheels yeah there's a sort of a few little blemishes but in general the original paint is absolutely superb you can see on that caliper there it's never been resprayed that is the original caliper paint the forks look very good all up inside haven't cleaned them and got all dead bugs etc off of them you can see that it's really really actually in, in good nick um, I took the front fender off of this, the front mudguard off of this to clean because well, you can't clean anything properly unless you really get that mudguard off because you just can't get up into these areas with the mudguard in the way. Also with the mudguard, when you take the mudguard off you can clean this area here where the forks normally get behind, you just can't clean that properly when it's on the bike so it was only a matter of undo undoing a few fittings and then it all came off nice and easy. So what else have I noticed? Um, mostly all the back end here that looked like it might have been scratched or in bad shape was all really just because someone had over lubricated the chain and oil and gunk had splattered up all underneath, all over the wheels. I've seen this in so many bikes where people over lubricate chains and it just coats all of the rear wheel all over it. And now you can see that rear wheel's in really nice shape. And there's oil all over the caliper here. All that's been cleaned off. All of this belly pan in here, that was full of grease and muck and oil, it just flicks off the chain and all ends up collecting in everywhere. Back of the swing arm was all greasy. Pretty much the whole thing was a state. Um, you can see now with the chain, it still looks oily, the chain, and I've been cleaning some of that oil and gunk off so you can actually see the gold uh, D, what's it called, the D-Link, or whatever it's called, uh, chain. Um, actually looks pretty new, in good shape. Uh, this is still all covered in oil and grease, so I haven't really got into that because it's it's not the end of the wheel that that's oily. Um, but the wheel, as you can see, is lovely and clean. It was just covered in gunk, literally caked in it. What I use to remove any grease and oil off of something like this, the easiest way, get a rag, squirt WD-40 onto the rag. Don't squirt WD-40 onto the paint because you'll get it on on the discs and on the on the brake pads etc you don't want WD-40 on those things for obvious reasons squirt WD-40 on the rag soak it nice in WD-40 and it will just take all the grease and grime off of your wheels it cuts in and it just takes all, all off onto the cloth itself that's a bit of a Dino top tip um, but yeah as you can see I'll probably lose this X up stick, I think that's been added. Obviously, um, doesn't really do any justice to the to the swing arm, make it look any better. So that will come off. The Olins, I think, are original stickers because it, obviously, like I say, it has the Olin shocks on these uh, 750R bikes. But yeah, it's in pretty good condition. This was all covered in muck and grease. You can still see a bit on there. It just all gets flung off on the small sprocket and it all ends up everywhere, but underneath was all greasy and horrible, that's all now clean, um, yet to get it polished obviously, but this has just been hot water, uh, decent hot soapy water, 
um, and that's all it is. Now back to this tank business that we were talking about earlier, where the guy put some, or some guy, one of the owners had put this carbon fibre protector, of all things, protector on the tank to protect the paintwork, and then what he's done is actually damaged the paintwork. So all of this damage that you see here is all because some Wally had put that on there and caused that damage. So will I respray it? No, I won't respray it. I'll use polish, get down to the best of it, use a tiny little bit of preventative so it doesn't rust, and then just get a nice little pen and just dab, 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 very gently, just dab in with some pearlescent white just to cover that up. And then at some point, if someone else buys a bike and they want to put a tank protector on there, they can, but for now, I'll just do that. Um, but yeah, the bike's really is in uh, good shape. Let's get the focus there for you. But the, the bike's in really nice shape. Um, the only thing really that's wrong with the bike is that upper front um, area near the front screen and the upper part of the fairing. Um, always nice to see when I took the seat off here is you've got the original toolkit in the seat. That's nice. Um, nice little idea that Yamaha had that uh, Honda didn't have with the CBR 400 or the 900. Yamaha's seat clicks under here and then to remove the seat once you take this back bit off which just comes undone from the key. So key goes in here, loosen that, will turn that, that loosens the mechanism here and the, the rear hump just comes straight off and then you've got this nice little pull here that pull there releases this bit and then the seat just releases and you've got access to the battery really simple but a really nice little bit of design there from Yamaha I like that um, everything's nice and easy to get to battery fuses etc uh, that's the reservoir obviously for the expansion reservoir for the radiator um, yeah just going back to this area so this is the real problem area that I'm going to have to tackle um, that's really about all I've got as far as problems go is uh, sorting this out so I'll have to get some uh, what I use normally people, some people try and wow the plastic but what I do is I'll, I'll get some resin and uh, glass fibre mesh on the back of this that will brace and bond it together and hold it and then obviously that crack will be held together at the back probably use a little bit of glue in there at the same time as resin at the back then fill any crack in and then respray over the top to, to finish off so that will be a little bit of work other than that um, today I've got to drain out the old fuel there's some nasty fuel in there that I've got to try and drain out I will try and siphon that out rather than have to take the tank off and undo the taps and the hoses etc etc um, that's not always easy on these bikes uh, older bikes are really easy where you just had a hose and a tap and off they came you just obviously turned the tap, took out the old fuel, put it back on nice and easy on my VN, VN which is a 2006 VN that thing's got no no technicalities whatsoever that bike is basically like a could be a 1960s, 70s bike it's just a very simple setup with the petrol tank you just literally take the tank off you've got a tap, two hoses and you just turn the tap, take the fuel out and then put no fuel in once you obviously put it back on whereas this will probably a bit, be a bit different with pumps and things um, so what I'll do is try and siphon the fuel out of this uh, into an old can go and get some new fuel from the petrol station and then obviously put some nice high octane uh, unleaded fuel in fill it up as much as I can it's always good to fill up as much as you can with high octane fuel especially this time of year when it's cool and damp you don't want water sitting in your tank and uh, most unleaded fuels will have a degree a percentage of water hard to believe I know but if there is water in fuel and the higher octane you get the less water percentage you'll have in there so fill it up as much as you can because that means there'll be less vapor that can actually sit in your tank because you've got more fuel in the tank and that will prevent rust and things causing your issues and obviously the high octane will be better try and start her up this afternoon see if she runs on that new fuel so that's where we are at the moment with the uh, YZF 750R
Right, so um, having uh, siphoned the old fuel out of the tank, um, I've got as much as I can out of there. I haven't siphoned a, a fuel tank for, for many, many, many years. Not really to be recommended, but um, it was a quick and easy way of getting most of the old fuel out. So, I have just um, siphoned an entire sort of five litre can of fuel out of that tank and I've replaced it with a new five litre can of fuel. Um, and I am about to see whether or not uh, it does start up now. I've been told and I was showed on the video that it does start. So let's see. I can hear the fuel tank. So, so I say the fuel pump, should I say. I can hear the fuel pump. Let's cancel the indicator. Um, I'm going to mix that fuel up a little just to get the new fuel swooshing around a bit. And I've been told that it needs a full choke. So there we go with that. And let's see what happens. Nice. That's first push of the button. Started first time. Always good to hear that. That's probably just where it's on full choke. I'll ease that choke off a bit. Come off the choke some. Get it to about sort of one and a half thousand revs if you can. Let it warm up. Sounds nice. Died in nicely on that choke, which is good. Always nice to hear a bike that you've never owned before start up first time. So that's a change of clean fuel and I will let that run for a little while now just to try and get some clean fuel through the carburation system and um, basically working through the cylinder heads, through all the valves. This bike, as you may know, has uh, five valves, five valves per cylinder, 20 valve inline four engine. Um, Obviously this was the Genesis generation of bikes that had those 20 valve cylinder heads. As always there will be a bit of moisture coming out the exhaust. Moisture always sits in, uh, in the exhaust. Nothing to ever be a, a afraid of or worried about initially. It's whether you get moisture once the thing's heated up because once the engine warms, there should be no moisture coming out. And if there is, then you obviously know you've got a, a cylinder head or a, you know a problem somewhere there where there's water getting into the cylinder head. Just let it warm up a little bit more before I give it a little bit of throttle. As many of you will know, and I don't want to tell people how to suck eggs here, but um, always let a bike warm up first before you start throttling the engine. You need all the oil to circulate up and around the pistons and the, the you know, into the upper part of the cams and cam chains and um, sort of top part of the engine with the valves and valve seats, etc. before you even start revving the bike. See what it's right now if I drop the choke off. That's no choke at all. But it's just purely on its tick over. Still sounds fine. Give it a little blip. That exhaust is very quiet. I'm surprised that um, someone's replaced the end can with this carbon fiber end can, and it's a it's a very tame end can. Of heard lots of bikes before where people have changed exhausts and they've been very very noisy but that's a very quiet very sort of smooth sounding not at all noisy as you can hear I'm just flipping the throttle I'm not taking it beyond sort of 4,000 revs and not revving it high or anything like that you just want to let it and I'm only doing this just for the sake of the video. Normally I just let a bike warm up 
but I just want to hear what it sounds like really see whether it misses when you throttle and you come off and it's not missing at all sometimes a bike when you bring the throttle in like that it'll, it'll miss because it's um, got something with the timing or the timing's out in some way but it actually sounds really sweet which is nice so there you go engine started new fuel in warming up nicely already you can see there's nothing coming out of the exhaust no, no no smoke no moisture very nice so results so far very good